Okay, well, thank you very much uh, for the invitation to speak today. Um, as uh, Yuko mentioned, uh, IFC is the private sector development arm of the World Bank. So what we do is, and what I specifically do, is work with private sector enterprise, and that can be manufacturing companies, it can be project developers, it can be banks and leasing companies. Uh, and specifically, uh, what we're trying to do increasingly is to uh, get these companies to invest in projects which uh, have a, a much greater component of energy efficiency or renewable energy in them. So what I'd like to talk to you uh, about today is um, more of an external looking view. We heard a lot uh, today about uh, Finland as an inter internal market for energy efficiency. Um, but IFC's role is really uh, to open up new markets and to uh, make sure that uh, the new markets that we're working with uh, develop as sustainably as possible. And uh, I think what we all agree is this is also then a tremendous opportunity for Finnish companies also to export your products and services uh, to other countries. So what I'll talk about today is really energy efficiency as a challenge or, or really as a business opportunity. Um, I'll give you some background on how real uh, IFC feels that these market opportunities are, uh, with some evidence from uh, the work uh, that we've been doing in some of, some of the countries. And I'll give you uh, some of my personal thoughts about how Finnish companies might be able to uh, benefit from the, some of these opportunities. So um, I think we've heard a lot today about energy efficiency as a business challenge. I don't really need to dwell on this. Um, energy prices hitting $130 a barrel. Uh, there's increasing global competition. Um, companies are decentralizing. Uh, you have new technologies emerging in uh, countries like India, like China, which are also uh, very efficient. Uh, so companies in, uh, in Finland just can't afford to be complacent, either on uh, if you look at a, com uh, a company which is producing goods, um, you know, there's increasing competition uh, from outside, but also for Finnish companies which are producing energy efficiency technologies. Um, you can't also be complacent as well because there are new technologies being developed in other countries. Um, there's also social pressures. Uh, increasingly uh, within IFC we see uh, social pressures becoming almost an, a license to operate. So for large corporations, um, there's increasing public scrutiny on uh, their environmental footprint. So energy efficiency and the associated greenhouse gas emissions um, becoming an increasingly uh, relevant social issue. And then we also see government taking action. Uh, I think uh, there's increasing uh, national, international recognition of climate change as a global threat. Many countries um, are developing their own climate change policies. We've heard today from Paul that energy efficiency has to be a core component of, energy, energy, of any energy policy going forward. So um, what I see is a convergence of market drivers, which are really creating, as, as many people have said today, almost a unique opportunity um, for companies uh, to um, invest in energy efficiency and to develop new types of technology. So, um, sort of my thoughts on, on a Finnish perspective. Uh, you have a very well-developed consulting industry. Uh, I think, you know, I mentioned to, to someone today that uh, in, in the years that I've been working with Finnish people and Finnish companies, um, you don't like uh, to dwell on superficial issues. You really li like to get down to detail. And uh, for an institution like IFC, which is using uh, Finnish experts uh, to assess our projects, or working with Finnish companies which are uh, selling technology, what we really value is the in-depth expertise that you have and that you bring to us. And that's something which IFC values uh, from the perspective of our investment officers. It's also something that our clients value. Um, they're not going to uh, get any nonsense from, from a Finnish partner. We see that you have world-class technology providers, I think you know, specifically about uh, the heating sector and district heating uh, with um, heat substations, with boilers, with uh, the piping, um, and then also you know, the pulp and paper industry. There are other industries which we can also mention. And then uh, I think we should also mention government support, uh, both from an internal perspective. Uh, you have um, you know, organizations like CITRA, uh, with, you know, which are executing government policy. You have uh, Motiva, which has been very active in the past. So internally, I think within, uh, within Finland, there is a strong government pressure and government support for energy efficiency. 
uh, but also externally. And this is something which perhaps uh, many people here don't see. Uh, the, the Finnish government does support IFC and the World Bank and other uh, international agencies uh, by providing donor funds, uh, which can then be used to support uh, the market transformation uh, initiatives, uh, which I'll talk about. And this is also you know, the, the reason why uh, the Finnish government uh, puts money into these programs is that we're working to open up new markets. So it's not leading perhaps directly one-on-one -on -one to uh, support for a Finnish company, but uh, what we're doing is we're creating new markets that Finnish companies can sell into. So a few words on the market opportunity. I mean, people talk about you know, a, a market which is worth billions of dollars, but you know, are, is, that, is that really realistic? Um, this, is, this is a slide. Uh, we've done some research in Russia uh, through one of the energy efficiency programs uh, that I've been supervising there. And uh, one of the things that we did was, we, for the first time, we carried out a survey of Russian small and medium-sized industry. Um, partly because we wanted to know ourselves, uh, you know, what is uh, the real technical potential for this type of, for these types of technology, um, but also we wanted to, to have proof that we can go to a bank with to say, look, really, this this is a market opportunity, or going to industry associations, helping them to uh, persuade their members that energy efficiency is a serious issue, and so you see uh, you know, a number of different sort of generic technologies like cooling, compressed air, heating, water, electricity. And in the red, you can, you can see the potential that was identified by the companies. And then in the yellow, uh, the actual uh, technical potential, if you compare it with opportunities which we've seen in other countries. And uniformly, um, you know, companies in Russia are underestimating the savings potential by at least 50%. Um, so there's an, an awareness gap here. Um, it, it has implications for the work that we as international finance institutions do in terms of trying to transfer, transform markets. You know, we need to work on not just providing investment vehicles, but we also need to work on raising awareness and exploiting as many different marketing channels as possible. But it also has implications for Finnish companies which are providing uh, technologies or services to these institutions. They need, you need to really work and, and build up people's uh, awareness. You need to educate consumers before they're actually willing to buy the technology or, or the service that you want to provide. Specifically uh, in Hungary, this is some results from uh, one of our oldest energy efficiency financing programs. Um, in Hungary, uh, we've been working in the housing sector for a number of years. Um, and what you see here is um, a very, very slow uh, startup. But uh, then in 2005, things started to pick up, and now uh, you know, we, we have a portfolio with just one bank of $87 million uh, of investments in energy efficiency. This is mainly uh, window replacements. Uh, it's also heating substations. It's extra insulation. And all of this is in the blockhouse market, uh, so working with uh, housing cooperatives uh, to help refurbish their buildings. And I mean, here, I think one of the things that you see is increasing government uh, promotion of this type of technology from the Hungarian side. Uh, but it, although people have been promoting uh, the technology, they've actually been, over this period, they've been reducing the government subsidy available for housing renovations. And so uh, I think what we see is a combination of um, exploiting different marketing channels. We have a bank which is actively selling an energy efficiency product. So they are trying to get people who have their accounts with them to actually take a loan specifically to refurbish uh, their apartments with energy efficiency in mind. We have partnerships with local project developers, with a, a company which does renovations, which is then also forming strategic partnership with, uh, with this specific bank. So we have a number of things which are all coming together, uh, including IFC changing the way that we administer the project, um, which are leading to very, very rapid growth in the amount of loans which are able to disperse uh, for this type of renovation project. Um, I could show you a similar curve uh, for the Czech Republic where we've seen a, a similar increase in lending which was also stimulated by a uh, change in government policy. Uh, if we look at the, um, the, uh, the Czech regulations on renewable energy uh, governing feed-in tariffs, uh, you can see from our portfolio, uh, for the first two years, very little uh, investment in renewable energy. We have a government change, we have a policy change, and suddenly we have uh, project developers which are interested in uh, developing 
projects and we suddenly have banks that are very interested in financing that type of project because the regulation is giving them the comfort to be able to invest. And so again, we see a step change in the amount of investment in renewable energy in the Czech Republic. Um, this is uh, from our program in China. Uh, this is often cited as, uh, I think, the most successful program that IFC is managing in energy efficiency at the moment. Uh, we started um, just over two years ago, and uh, if you look at the, the total loans uh, which have been dispersed to date, uh, we're up to um, around $300 million worth of investment. Uh, we've exhausted the first uh, financing facility uh, that we uh, put in place. We've just approved the second financing facility, and uh, if the trend continues, by the end of 2010, we'll have um, stimulated almost $1 billion of investment uh, in China. And that's through a mixture of awareness raising uh, with companies, uh, forming partnerships between local banks and project developers, um, and working directly with the banks themselves, you know, helping them to develop strategy, helping them to develop financing products, and then helping train their loan officers to actually identify and appraise this type of project. Um, the sorts of things that we see in, in the Chinese portfolio at the moment are a lot of industrial projects, a lot of heat recovery projects, but we've just done uh, some research now on the district heating sector in China, uh, and um, we see uh, within the, sort of the, the, the projected one billion, we see a significant portion of projects coming then from the building sector, from district heating renovations. And uh, actually there'll be a, a seminar tomorrow at FinPro uh, which is promoting the results of that study. We've also been working in Russia. Um, here we had a slow startup. Uh, we had one bank, Centrinvest, uh, which um, took a, a $4 million credit line from IFC. Uh, but what we see with Centrinvest is you know, IFC, for various reasons, wasn't able to uh, continue lending to, uh, uh, to the bank. Um, partly we didn't want, partly they didn't want, but they were convinced that there was a business opportunity here. So uh, they, uh, on their own, they've uh, already financed another $13 million uh, of business uh, with IFC. They are actually talking to us about follow-on credit lines and they're taking loans as well from the EBRD to continue their lending. Um, with MDM Bank, uh, this is the largest partner that we're working with currently. Uh, again, they're, um, they're investing in industrial projects but are quite interested in the, uh, in the housing sector. Another thing that IFC is doing in terms of market transformation activities uh, is uh, what we call Lighting Africa. This is, uh, we mentioned I think earlier this morning, LED technology. So what we're doing here is uh, acting really as a, as a market uh, aggregator. So we're, we're providing an information exchange between uh, technology, uh, lighting technology providers and LED uh, technology providers as well as solar panel integrators. So uh, the role that IFC can play here is as a catalyst uh, to transform markets. And IFC, that's the work I, th I think if, if you look at those previous examples, a lot of that work is through uh, working with financial institutions, so local banks and leasing companies. But um, as I mentioned, you know, IFC also has uh, climate change as a strategic priority and all of our uh, industry departments, what we call our industry investment departments as well as our regional investment departments have their own climate change targets now. And so if you look at this graph what you can see over the last uh, three years is how IFC's portfolio has been growing uh, within uh, energy efficiency and renewable energy projects. And what you see is significant year-on-year -year growth um, but in reality, that's almost been accidental. Um, we haven't uh, in the past had any uh, really formal way of influencing uh, the design of projects so that more energy efficiency is built into, into these projects. Um, going forward, we are going to have uh, more uh, energy audits available for, for different companies. We have uh, in energy efficiency, renewable energy built into our environmental and social performance standards so I think going forward, uh, there is going to be increasing uh, volumes of business which are, which are done on energy efficiency, clean production. Um, IFC is also committed to monitoring its own carbon footprint of the portfolio. So we, now, we look at the carbon footprint of IFC as, a, as an institution, but we're now going forward going to be uh, trying to benchmark our own, uh, own portfolio and ensure that the carbon footprint of, of the portfolio doesn't grow in the future either.
Oops, so daisy. So, um, what what is the opportunity here for Finnish companies? Um, I think uh, first of all, uh, you should continue to innovate. You know, from what I know, um, as an outsider of the Finnish industry, you know, there is a tradition here of innovation. And I think um, that's very, very important um, going forward, not just for Finland, but for some of these other markets. We need to have more efficient technologies, but we also need to have uh, technologies available at a lower cost. In particular, I'm thinking about uh, innovations applicable for low-income countries and for low-income households uh, in countries, especially if, I, if we think about the focus of Citra on uh, the built environment. Um, IFC is currently looking at some work in South Africa on working with uh, construction developers. Uh, how can we actually build low-income housing which is uh, as efficient as possible? So that's an area which uh, might be interesting. Um, I think looking at uh, market-tested technology. As an investor, uh, IFC doesn't want to be investing in brand new technologies which have never been tested anywhere before. So uh, Finland's ability to test its own products and technologies I think is an important um, aspect of being able to export those technologies to different markets. Um, here I'm also thinking about uh, supply chains. So when you're, in, when you're uh, trying to sell a new product into a new market, um, from, the, from that local country perspective, it's very important uh, to also understand how can those technologies be serviced. You know, is there adequate um, uh, maintenance available, uh, spare parts? I think the government also has a role to play externally. Uh, I've mentioned that uh, you know, IFC uh, specifically you know, receives a lot of support from the Finnish government for its market transformation processes, uh, projects. But I think it's also important for the results of that work to be disseminated to a broader audience. Um, the whole point of uh, the fin Finnish support for IFC's work is that it creates market, it opens up new markets. But if Finnish companies don't uh, understand where those market opportunities are, then um, that, mo that money uh, isn't going to be most effectively used. And then I think a, a final uh, thing is uh, to increase local presence in markets. Uh, what I see is uh, the most successful companies are ones which are uh, decentralizing. You know, IFC is doing that itself. You need to be very close to your, to your customers. Uh, and that means um, partly putting your best Finnish people out into, into regions um, where they can work effectively with their clients. It also means uh, cultivating uh, local talent and local expertise. So just to sum up, um, I think you know, what I see, uh, I've been working in this area for about 15 years now, and I think this is an exceptionally exciting time. Um, the recognition of climate change uh, as a business issue, the increase in the, in the oil prices is revolutionizing markets. It's a different playing field and um, you know, there really is so much opportunity out there. IFC has proven that you know, these markets really do exist. Uh, we've been able to test new financing mechanisms which can open up these new markets and so uh, I think continued support for that market transformation work is also essential. But I think it's also important to recognize that these investments don't just walk through the door. Um, sitting in an office in, in Helsinki isn't necessarily going to sell a piece of technology in China. So you really do uh, need to have a local presence uh, to be able to make the most of these opportunities. Thank you. Thank you, Ian Crosby. For, for introducing business opportunities. Uh, you showed that there is additional potential, potential in energy efficiency, especially in Russia, based on international practice, which is not well noticed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess this means much more potential. Does this, this mean also that, that there is much better potential for, for ESCO type of services and contracts in, in Russia, which, which was mentioned earlier this, today. Mm -hmm. what, what is happening with the ESCO in, in Russia? Does it work at all? Well, I think if you, if you look at the, uh, the current uh, number of companies that would be uh, really classified as ESCOs in Russia, uh, you'd come up with zero. 
Um, it's not really a well-developed, uh, it's not a developed sector at all in terms of you know, the number of companies um, which are operating that type of business model. Uh, and actually, uh, you know, my personal view is that if you look at our, uh, the countries around the world, there are actually very few countries where the ESCO model is really mm -hmm. very, very, very effective. Um, actually, in China, uh, the, the ESCO model does seem to be working, uh, but I think that's actually one of the exceptions. Um, so I think uh, in, in Russia, there isn't a market at the moment. There, there aren't companies operating that business model. Um, I think what's important in Russia going forward is to actually work out who is present in the market um, and work out which segments might be applicable uh, for that type of business model, um, and then to, to really work with the resources which are available. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think the market's there yet. Mm -hmm. So probably it, it, it is a dying concept there, or do you believe that it will come up? You know, I, I think it's, it's very, very country specific. Yeah. Uh, because you know, if you look at um, Germany and Austria, they have quite a strong tradition of performance contracting. Um, if you look at Hungary, they also have a number of um, ESCOs which are working quite well, I mean, in, especially in the municipal sector. Um, we have uh, one a particular project with OTP Bank and uh, an ESCO called Caminas, which is looking at renovation of schools and hospitals uh, across Hungary. Hungary. And uh, that's working very well. I say in China, um, there are a number of, uh, if you like, niche ESCOs, you know, a couple working in the cement sector, which are, which are doing very well. Um, in America, you, know, you have a revival now, I think, of the ESCO business, especially in, in the public sector. But um, there, there are a few examples, but it's not, it's not a concept which has taken off globally. How can Finnish companies apply for IFC, IFC's loans and financing? Um, well, I mean, IFC uh, does invest in, in projects. Uh, I mean, the, the simplest answer is uh, you, work, you, you identify a project and you supply a project concept to IFC for financing. I mean, it's, it's a simple loan application. In that sense, we're a bank like any other. Um, if, it's, uh, if it's for a large-scale investment. Um, if it's a small-scale investment, then uh, we have a network of local banks and leasing companies that we work with. And, uh, and they provide, uh, I mean, we we're providing financing to them um, or providing support of some description to them and then the local banks are making the loans themselves. So thank you very much. Thank you. I and Crosby.